I've read all the reviews for Dr. Strange's mom. And listen to my favorite reviewers and YouTubers bash the film. I've dissected all their criticisms to see if I was missing something. And the conclusion that I've come to is they're all batshit crazy. And this is a good film. So first I'm going to dissect some of the major arguments the critics have. And then I'm going to go over some of the issues where the critics and I agree. And then finally, I'm going to tell you how much I love Sam Raimi. The biggest problem the critics have is that this is another bait and switch. Much like the Loki series. Where they take a bankable character that everyone loves, slap his name on a movie. So people will come see it. And then surprise, the movie's really about this other character. That no one knows or even cares about. But this isn't a bait and switch at all. Because America Chavez is barely a character. She's the MacGuffin of this film. Like the Infinity Stones. Or the Ark of the Covenant in Indiana Jones. Or if I could be more accurate, like Baby Yoda, or the Golden Child. And while they do give her a quick backstory, she's really nothing more than a plot device. Something for the protagonist and antagonist to fight over. Maybe in the future, they'll have a show or movie about America Chavez. But Multiverse of Madness is a dead. This movie is definitely about Doctor Strange. And those same people are saying the same thing about Scarlet Witch. That she stole this movie from Doctor Strange. But these people forget what an antagonist is. They're too used to Marvel villains. People just there to have a big fight with at the end. They forget about great villains like Darth Vader and Voldemort and Brody from Point Break. Every good story has a good flushed out villain with proper motivations, no matter how stupid those motivations are. The antagonist is always half the story. Without the antagonist, there's no conflict, therefore no story. And while the MacGuffin and the antagonist are both integral parts of a story, the story is about the hero, and this hero is Doctor Strange. And this story is about Doctor Strange's need to control everything, how it leads to ruin, and how he needs to let it go. But, but Mr. Lot, it's the hero that defeats the villain at the end. And if that's the case, then America Chavez is the hero because she defeats Wanda. No, you aren't listening. This story is about the hero learning how to let go of his need to control everything. And at the end, that's what he does. Instead of taking America Chavez's power and killing her, he gives America the confidence to do it herself. Which completes his story arc. You can't have a story about the hero letting go of control. And then at the end, taking control and saving the day. No, handing control over to America Chavez completed this hero's journey. So the complaint here is that the Illuminati were just glorified cameos. And if these are the most powerful and smartest beings in this universe, why were they taken out so easily and comedically? The only thing I have to say to the glorified cameo complaint is for God's sakes people, you were just saying how America Chavez and Wanda took too much time in this movie, and now you want a whole team of superheroes. There's only so much time in the day. Now, as for how they were dispatched, I couldn't agree more. The Illuminati in this universe were pretty weak, but that's how I justify it. It's the Illuminati in this universe. Hopefully these characters will be better in our universe. 
The first issue is Wanda's motivations are crazy and don't make any sense. You see, Wanda wants her imaginary family back. So her plan is to kill America Chavez, steal her powers, and go to a universe where her kids exist. Then Wanda's gonna kill their real mother and take her place. The obvious question is, why doesn't Wanda go to a universe where those kids have lost their mother? That way she can fill the void for them, while they fill the void for her. If a clone of my mother showed up and killed my real mother, I wouldn't just go and love the clone. I'd fight back. Then my question is, how does Wanda even know about America Chavez? There's only one in the whole multiverse. How did Wanda learn about her and then track her down across the whole multiverse? It seems pretty impossible. And why does she have to kill America Chavez at all? Why doesn't Wanda just ask her to drop her off in a universe where her kids are? The filmmakers thought of that one and put in the movie a lame excuse that went something like, if my kids get sick, I want to make sure they could be cured. So Wanda justifies killing countless wizards, the Illuminati, and trying to kill America Chavez for insurance purposes. Why don't you just put America Chavez on speed dial? Your kids get sick, you give her a call. Everything's fixed. There's no reason to turn into a psychopath. Now I understand that it's the dark home that's corrupting her. But I don't understand why it's making her stupid. And just a quick life lesson for everyone. If what you're doing turns your fingers black, it's probably not the right thing to do. Then there's the issue of the multiverse part of the multiverse of madness. There's not enough multiverse to call it madness. We only get to spend any significant time in three of the infinite universes. But don't worry, we get a split second view of what I'm told is 16 other universes. But why spend time there when we can spend time in our universe, what's known as Earth 616? We go twice to an in-between universe where the Book of Asante hangs out. We spend a considerable time in a universe being destroyed by an incursion. But we spend most of our time in Earth 838, which is just like Earth 616, our Earth. That is if our Earth was a little bit in the future, and plants started growing everywhere. I would have rather seen one of these other universes that were featured in the 16 universe montage they had. There was a robot universe and a universe where everything was paint. There was an underwater universe, and a universe run by bees. A universe where everything's a cartoon. There's a universe that still had dinosaurs, and the one where everything is cubes. Any of these strange, crazy, and different universes would have sufficed. But we have to spend most of the movie in a universe whose only difference is buildings have plants growing on them, pizza is made into balls, red means go, and the superhero team is stupid and weak. What a crazy universe. The main thing I love about this movie is this is a Sam Raimi film. His style of filmmaking is displayed loudly throughout the whole movie. Raimi has already proven he knows how to mix superheroes with horror, so he was the perfect choice for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. This movie has some average Marvel storytelling, and some above average Marvel cameos and superhero stuff, but what makes it special is Sam Raimi's horror touch. That's what makes this movie stand out. Now let's go over some highlights. My two favorite parts of this movie are Zombie Strange. I mean, how can you not like Zombie Strange? 
and the other one is the music fight. Now I have to agree with some of the critics. This fight makes no sense. There's no reason for it. But damn it if it doesn't look cool. Just the sheer imagination it took to put this scene together is impressive. From a practicality standpoint, it's pretty ridiculous. From a cool stuff I've never seen before standpoint, it's pretty awesome. The other thing I appreciated about this movie is the way the Illuminati was killed. They were straight up murdered. It wasn't like most comic book movies where they get blasted and fall over and give some goodbye speech. No, one of them got cut in half. The other got his neck broken. Except for Captain Marvel going out the normal superhero way. This was some pretty horrible stuff. Good for you, Marvel. What's made this movie so great for me is the chances it took in magic and horror. Over the years, Doctor Strange's magic has evolved. From just making light weapons, to actually making cool and effective tricks. And now, we're conjuring up monster hands to rip out eyeballs. And while some wizards are using bows and arrows, I can't wait to see what Doctor Strange and Wong are going to do next.